Well, hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending, of course, when you're listening to us. Uh, welcome at another episode of Dance Jams. Today, I would like to talk about the art of practice and preparation in dance, but I would never do that without my good buddy and my best friend, Ton Greten, all the way from the Netherlands. Ton, are you there? Uh, I, I yes. Throw, I throw a subject to you. I want to talk about the art of practice and preparation in dance. Is that something that uh, speaks to you? Yeah, fantastic, Sean. Actually, the whole life is a dance. You know that? The whole life is a dance or the whole life is a practice or a preparation? No. Both. <laughs> Both. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But the whole... Life is a dance, yes. I would say more like that. Yeah, life is, a nice. life is a dance. Maybe that's a life I, is a dance. Yes. I like that. Life is a dance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I, I, I think so. I think Nietzsche at some point in time said not, not our good friend <laughs> Nietzsche, the dancer, but Nietzsche, the psychologist and philosopher. I mean, you have two choices in life. Now, life is a dance and it's your choice whether you're the spectator or the participant. Yes. But, but I train but. my whole life for my dance. Yeah, I, I remember uh, not too long ago, we had, uh, we had a Dutch uh, uh, episode. And dear listeners, that sounds maybe weird, but uh, Ton and I, we have actually two podcasts. Both are called Dance Jams, and one is in Dutch and one is in the Netherlands. In Dutch, I have to say not in the Netherlands, but it's in Dutch, and um, and we do the same subject, and sometimes it is exactly the same, and sometimes it's a little bit different. But typically, I remember after we did the Dutch subject, and oh man, I wanted to say this, actually. And mm -hmm. we were talking about practice and preparation, uh, and then one of the things that we actually said in the, in the pre-discussion is, you know, it's a whole lifelong of preparation and practice yeah. it's not yeah it doesn't yes. matter what it is it doesn't with matter food, what it is yeah with uh drinking with everything in your drinking. life with with yeah drinking also eh? if you not <laughs> <Yeah>. drink <laughs> you get somewhere problems <laughs> yes, so yes, act yes. Yeah. actually also if you want to be say if you have a goal to be a really professional dancer mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't uh, drink Coca-Cola and uh, coffee with uh, 10 sp uh, spoons of sugar in it. That's um, actually not done norm normally. No, but normally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Ton and I both, we like uh, a little bit of sweet things. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. yes. We do, we do. So we have a little bit here and there. We cheat a little bit, right? Yeah, <laughs> Sometimes yes, yes. a little bit with candy <laughs> or mm -hmm. with, uh, with pastry. We cheat a little yes. bit. But in general, in general, we're talking about the bigger things in in. in in, and all, that's very often for, for, forgotten is what you put in your body, right? Garbage in is garbage out. So healthy yes. thing in. So if you want to have a maintain a good, a, a good body, and I mean, it's so obvious as it is, but the majority of what you eat uh, should be, uh, you know, only yes. healthy. Yes. The, the investment now in your body is the payment later. Yeah, I always say, ah. you know, you won't get a healthy body from eating one time uh, <laughs> a salad. You won't also get a fat body or a not so nice body uh, if an overweighted, I should say. I'm sorry. That yeah, was not overweighted. So nice. That yes. was not so nice for me to say, but from eating one time a, a, a burger, right? So yeah. um, so that's... Um, yes. that's Too much for everything, Sean, yes. it's not... That, it's not okay. That actually. is that is a better way to say thank you. And to less, also not. So to find less. your own balance also in your yeah. training. And this yeah. is our subject for today. And uh, our target group could be uh, social dancers or could be professional dancers. So I would want to keep it more dancers who are practice um, for to be a professional dancer or uh, a dancer on a higher level or more experienced dancer to get to gain more an experienced dancer. Yeah. But yeah. still the social dancer 
you can also listen to the podcast because there are many many uh, points what yeah. you can use for yeah. your for your daily life for your daily life and, or uh, for your dancing yeah. in general or if you want to yeah in dancing if you want to improve in anything in this case of course we focus a little bit more on dance but if you want to improve in anything that is a subjective thing of course what is improved but you can improve on any level then i think what we have to say here is maybe helpful for you we leave that up to you to decide whether this was helpful <coughs> for you or not um and then yes. professional I used to have a quote, maybe we can bring it back. You don't have to be a professional to have a professional attitude to the things that you do. Mm -hmm. Does that make Absolutely, sense? Absolutely, Sean. That's yeah. a nice one. Yes, really. Yeah. That's a nice one. I have one, another one. Mm -hmm. It's not a quote or it, maybe it's a quote. I don't know. I, they use it in English, I think. I actually, I practice and train my whole life also for dance, but also as a human being. Yeah. And one thing what I remember now from uh, the time that I uh, train and practice is too early is on time. On time is too late. Too late is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. So it starts with discipline and motivation. And these are big words. Um, and actually, we need them and also respect and continuity. So this is actually very important for your training if you want to gain a result for the long term. Yeah. For the short term, it's okay if you miss something here and you do and you do it more social. Yes, that's okay. But if you are want to compete on yeah. the dance floor, mm -hmm. if you want to go to auditions for in a company or you want to dance uh, in TV programs, and then that needs a longer preparation and you need um, to train for that one. And what you could train, uh, we will speak uh, yeah, yeah. now yeah. I'll, in this podcast about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like that. I think, you know, I was reading uh, just the other day uh, a book called 10X, you know, the book is called 10X and the, the author was um, uh, was talking about if it comes to achieving things in life, um, there are two things most critical. Number one is what you mentioned, discipline. And the other one I thought it was interesting, the way he mentioned it was integrity, right? How, uh, you know, how much integrity do you have to yourself? And what, I mean, how I interpreted what he said was, you know, we often make promises to other people. You know, I will show up in time. I will practice with you five times a week. Uh, you know, all these kind of things, right? And then uh, how true, t how much true do you have towards that promise? Well, and here's the thing that I have. It, it is, of course, important if I tell to Tom, you know, we start at nine o'clock with our podcast. You know, it's my own integrity to do that. If I say I will be prepared to uh to this podcast it's my discipline to be prepared but here is where it becomes interesting tom and i would like to have your opinion about it how much integrity do you often have to yourself you promise to yourself that you would like to achieve blah fill in that's your own goal right and then the next thing after a few weeks you say yeah maybe i just you know there's there's a lack of integrity to the promise you made to yourself to eat more healthy to sleep better um, so it's not only what you and i have towards each other which i know ton we know each other now for years already we have a lot of things that we promise to each other we also are very honest to each other can mm -hmm. you do this sooner or later you know we say okay let's do that but it's often also what promises do you make to yourself, right? Does that make, yes. does that make sense, Tom? Yes, that, absolutely, that, Sean. Yeah, it's yeah. a motivation also yes. to, um, to be aware that your life is fun, that you like to do it. And if there comes a point where you um, not are motivated anymore to do and you say, ah, I will do it tomorrow, um yes then it's actually already too late but not too late if you do it really tomorrow 
integrity yeah. and discipline. But if you do it three months later, it's also okay. But still, uh, try to have a certain continu uh, continue. Yeah, I, uh, continuation. I say the word right. You know, be, Continu yeah, continuation. That's very, very um, important because you can start on something, but stay in the first thoughts why you did it and why you started and yeah. why you want to do it and take that always back in your training it doesn't matter what you train mainly uh, for dance um, this is important also you the one what i learned through the years is respect sean mm -hmm. i will explain what i mean with respect mm -hmm. or give some more context i go to my training in my group and there are a bunch of hip hop dancers or contemporary dancers, doesn't matter which uh, kind of dance form it is. And I'm too late. So my discipline was um, maybe I was going on time, but something happened on the way. And um, I come too late and go immediately to my lesson, to my training. I would do to the group, sorry group, that I disturb you. Um, I had a flat tire or I was in the traffic and I couldn't really not go earlier um, for my work. So then people would understand it because you disturb already the group and it's, it's not respectful just um, to go and ah, I'm too late, um, say sorry, nobody knows why what the story is but also vice versa for the trainer also and he needs also to have respect and when he do exercises with you or he doing a certain training give context as a trainer also so context is one of also for me important next to the uh, discipline motivation integrity and uh, yeah respect is uh, a big word so all these words together holistic yeah, yeah. i would um, get yeah. that in the mind also respectful for yourself for if sure. you say i i train today right. and you don't do it where's where's the respect for yourself then yeah. and the discipline yeah i think that has a that's a huge part of being prepared to either do a competition or you do a you do a showcase or you do uh, an, audition, an audition an audition so there are many things that you can prepare for yes and, and an um, audition audition for school or an audition, audition for, for company it's yeah, also same yeah yeah both is both uh, things so you um if you you know i told and i now basically see everything as a journey but there are faces in the journey right so yeah. so they're not separate parts it's not like you prepare and then suddenly you have a competition or one of the other events it is it is a, a holistic thing but there are definitely different phases of uh, your journey there is a there is for instance a phase if you go on vacation where you say okay let's plan our destination uh, a parallel of destination would be your goal right you say hey i would like to become a part of that company or i would like to score pretty high on that competition that's your destination right um so then you say hey i'm going so what do i need for uh, that destination you make your list of preparation you go to a cold country you know you bring winter coats <laughs> you go to a warm country you bring swimsuits Right? Does that make sense? So if I go to a competition of dance, uh, then then you need dance shoes. I mean, it's as simple as that. But to make things and see things through that lens of what things can I prepare and what not is, in our beliefs, incredibly important to increase your chances to reach your destination. You can never get a guarantee that it is. And it is not necessary also. That's part of the adventure and the journey but to increase the success of your uh, of your journey um, comes down to you know knowing what you can influence and what you cannot influence yes absolutely sean i'm um, so beautiful set what you said there and make a notice here on my paper 
I don't want to forget uh, to hook in about this, mm -hmm. this departure and yeah. this, um, how you call it, destiny or destination, arrival, yeah. destination, yeah. arrival and your journey. So I would see it as three things, actually. Yeah, definitely. You, you um, departure, you have a journey and you have an arrival or destination. In dancing, exactly the same. Because if you have your proprioception, your body awareness, your own awareness of your body and your body parts, they have also a departure from A. They have a journey, a pathway, and they have a arrival, a destination. And this is in your power training, this is in your uh, stretching, in your isolations, in everything what you do, you need that awareness of these three points. And how more you are aware of it, how more it will improve on that dance floor, but also during your life with all the activities. Sean, super set. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we have uh, you can also if it comes to a competition or an audition <clears throat> competition is a little bit easier in this case for me to explain because there are typically more than one round right um yes. so i always used to say hey there are things that you do before the competition and then you can break that down into very beginning before or ramping up to the competition then there are things that you do in between the rounds and there are things that you do while you do your competition or while you dance for your audition. And if you can see those different faces, you do different things at all. So while you are dancing, you are not going to think anymore, am I ha what dress am I going to wear? You're already on the competition floor, that should be done. At the very beginning of the process, that's probably a good time to think about what dress shall I put yeah. on. That's your yeah. departure, but that's maybe departure. before you depart, that's what you told, yeah. you what could... you take in your suitcase. And this, this case, as a dancer, exactly. you prepare already everything before. Mm -hmm. And if you not have learned that from your teacher, maybe mm -hmm. it's now the time to learn that. And when the trainer don't do this, so maybe there is some point where I think, okay, I have to be more prepared. And if you be more prepared, the hopefully the success is uh, change the chance what you have, it's much bigger. And if you do nothing from nothing comes nothing. So also, this is a part of it from your training, prepare your training. So when I do my um, running, and I do my jogging, so I'm prepared. When it's raining, I have a rain jacket. When I uh, my shoes, I take more clothes shoes. Um, so I get my material right. So when I go on the dance floor and I worked on my jogging and I'm trained, then there are no excuses, but I'm prepared. I uh, take my watch and I put my time on it. I, there's, my watch say after five minutes, you have uh, one mile. Uh, next 10 minutes, uh, next five minutes, you have 2.2 mile. I think, wow, I'm improving. So I'm, I'm really already prepared for my training. I have my water with me, etc., etc. So we are not there to say uh, what you must do, what we say only. Be prepared for your destination, for your um, departure, for your journey, and for your arrival or your destination. Yeah, that's the only thing what we say. And which um, elements you want to do it? That's personal based. That's really um, uh, what it is. So there is no magic trick, but the magic trick is how you are prepared. That's um, planning. There's no magic trick, but there are definitely tools and way you can, yes. you know, so to speak, slice this uh, cookie. So one of the things that 
uh, we like to do is, you know, there are three things that you can think about preparing. How is my knowledge prepared, right? Do I know uh, about things? And that's not only knowing about competitions, but it's also knowing about your body, about your movements. There are so many things that you could know. Then the ability that you have, you can work on that. Let's say flexibility. And then mm -hmm. the skill mm -hmm. is how you use your flexibility in a certain movement if you talk about dance, right? So we we like to make that distinction. You know, it's a little bit hard to see the difference between ability and skill, but, you know, the, 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 the example of flexibility is a really good example, right? You can be very flexible, but if you don't know how to use it in movement skill, then so those three, if you measure yourself on those three things, and I wish I said that in the Dutch I think there is a there is a six letter acronym that I like to use and it's coming from advertisement and it's called Dagmar D D A G M A R Dagmar and it signs define your action goals and measure your action results so define your action goals is your destiny you know what oh. you want to going to do but you measure yeah. every time what you do, measure action results. And if you do that constantly, you can see like, you know, when, you, when you're on a ship, see if you're still sailing towards the goal that you are going to. Does that make sense, Tom? Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> you can put it in the footnote, uh, Sean. Yeah, that's I can put it in the footnote. That's a great idea. Yeah, that's <clears throat> really, really fantastic. And um, that ability, and that skills gives you more uh, choices. So when you have then options, I could say ability are your yeah, I options. Like I like the options. Yes. Yeah. yeah, options. When you have options, then yeah. your skills are your choices. Yeah, yeah. Options lead to choices. That's definitely, you know, yes. that's the basis of your meta gem or, you know, I sometimes even talk about it. it's our method but you wrote it yes. you know but it yes. is yeah the more the more um, abilities you have the more options you have uh, the more choices you have and then it comes down to how and what do you choose and if you do that without which any, skills eh? yeah, which skills skills you choose. of course yes, yeah yes. knowledge ability skill and then it comes down to how do you make your choices and the further you can stay away from judgment over your choices, the more interesting it becomes. Yes, absolutely. And see your body as an instrument, the whole body, yeah. head, cool. shoulders, cool. arms, hands, fingers, chest, yeah. hips, mm. yes, legs. Does feet. anyone recognize that when Tom does that? <laughs> when he said head, the shoulders, arms, hands and yeah. fingers. We're talking about the 10 body parts. Yes, the and, 10 body um, parts. And that's knowledge, and that can, right? And yes, then that's how, it. yeah. Yeah, and then bend, stretch, rotate. And then that's you ability. practice your ability, yes. Yeah. And then you practice more ability to stretch, yeah. to power training and isolation. So, so and how ability. more and more, how more the body can work in space and time, how That's more flexible scary. they are, how more stronger skills, mm -hmm. how more um, isolations you can, how more coordinated you are, yeah, coordination is technique mostly, then, Skill. Mm -hmm. then yep. you have skills and then you have a choice. And if you have a choice, you can color space time. Yep. You yep. cannot color really the space and not the time, but yep. by sp speaking, Actually, you are the artist on that floor, in that box where you are, or outside in your sphere, and you color that with your art, with your abilities, what you have, and with your nice. skills. I like, that. I like that. Yeah, that is so in the heart of your method. If I would translate it, uh, Tonan, and you can see if I really understand your method up front. Mm. You know your destiny you decide what form you want to create. There is way yeah. more than one way how you can color in that form, right? Yes. There are several ways and we would love you to explore all these ways and see what choices you make. And don't immediately make another choice, in my opinion, if 
one way doesn't work. Then check your knowledge, ability, and skill why one way didn't work for you so well. If it's maybe out of your reach, you could make a different choice. But maybe there is something saying, hey, if I get a little bit more ability here, I could do it in this way that I decide to do. What often happens is that people immediately start to change the form that they want to achieve. Like, oh, I can do that. Let's change the form. Instead of working on the knowledge, ability, and skill. Um, What sometimes also um, exists is that they think there is only one way to reach that form and if that's your choice that's fine we just say it's so fun to just pick your form and see how many ways you can reach that form and if you don't immediately get it that way check your knowledge ability and skill see if you can opt that to reach it in that way and that's a really nice way to prepare Yes, and you can <laughs> update it always. I yeah. I call my training an update from like uh, yesterday or two days ago or one week ago, yeah, because I, I my update is actually mm-hmm. when I do first my uh, hamstrings <clears throat> or I do my power sits or squats, you can call them or plie, then the first time it hurts, I can do it only 10 seconds. So then I practice it again. Two days later, I still have muscle pain, but I can do 15 seconds. Three months later, I can do two minutes. So these yeah. are my updates. And um, and this I can do with all the things in, uh, in dancing and also with other sports. And this is the training what you could do if you are prepared. And if you are not prepared and I, then your goal will be far away. And when this is your goal, I'm now, I get 60 years old, uh, listeners, and I'm quite proud of it, of my age. But I want to practice for myself now, for my health, but also I want to be that dancer what I was with 20 years old, (laughs) with the knowledge what I have now. So what I'm doing, Mm -hmm. yes, what I'm doing, is I'm this is my goal. I start with stretching and my mobility is so I'm so stiff. I'm started today and every day I do a bit and then it gets closer to my goal. And now my students say in the last lesson, Oh, John, you will get more uh, flexible. Your mobility, it's uh, growing. You are developing. I said, Oh, thank you for the motivation mm-hmm. i get more motivation because my um uh, students they are so flexible sean they are young and they work yeah. on it and yeah. i give them context why it's so important to train that and to improve that yeah it's really incredible and now i get compliments for them because i'm so that's stiff good. Yeah, yes yes that's, that's well, wonderful you're yeah. still young compared to me because i uh, will be 64 this year yes it's <laughs> I mean, 64. Go for it. <laughs> but one thing yeah. that what you said actually spoke a lot to me and definitely also we we are we call ourselves dance gems which has a lot of relationship with the method gems uh, but we often hear uh, the saying you know practice makes perfect and we completely disagree with that practice makes progress that's yes. what we believe in but practice yeah. makes perfect believe that's the belief that there is only one way to do things yes and that's we we just just so that you know if you don't like that please let us know that is great put it in the notes put it in but the it notes is, Sean. dance makes progress and yeah dance makes progress perfect is an illusion no practice make progress so yeah. Put it in the notes also, yeah. Sean, in the footnote. Yeah. So yes, we'll, we'll wonderful. Do, yeah, so that's uh, that's what we do. And the other thing is what I was thinking about is, you know, yes, Ton and I are proud that we at our age are still this flexible and, you know, and still can dance. For a big part, that is also our mom and dad. They gave us really good genes for sure. You know, we cannot influence everything. But at the same time, you know, um, it is also because without knowing it from each other, we have seen our whole life as practice and preparation as self. It's not like we started to eat healthy yesterday. For some reason, 
that has always been in our being. Now, does that mean that wherever you are in life, that it's too late to uh, to start? No, it's never too late to start. It's just, you know, from eating one salad, again, <laughs> you know, you don't suddenly get healthy. But I promise you, if you do that for a few weeks alone, you know, for a few weeks alone, eating a little bit more healthy than you do today, it makes a huge difference. It makes a, so every little step practice makes progress. Remember every little step, you might not see it in the moment, but if you look back 10 days ago, 20 days ago, let's say with power training, like you do your planks, I did once a, a plank challenge, right? Can you do six minute planks? And I thought, wow, that's a long time man. six minute plank. After a few days, I, I saw, oh, I can do 10 seconds more. I can do 20 seconds more. And then after two weeks, I swear I could do six minute plank. Your, 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 your sound is gone. Sorry, Sean, you yeah. updated yourself. You yes, updated yes. you. And, and, and it's That's so motivating yeah. and, it's, and it's only seconds. So what is a second you would say? Yeah. And, and, and so, but it was, it was fun. It was, uh, it was fun. And, and that principle is, you know, of course, we are not blind for that at some point in time, you know, age will get to you. Look at my hair. <laughs> you know, it, it is what it is. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's really fine. No, that's also a matter of expectation. Um, but yeah, that's what I wanted to say is you can still this be this fri vibrant and enthusiastic. You know, it has a lot to do with, you know, seeing your life as a complete journey where you keep practicing and progressing. That is so much fun. Your sound is gone again, Tom. <laughs> Listeners, don't forget, you invest in yourself. You are only one time on this planet Earth. Do it. There is no second chance. If you want to change, take action. Don't dream about it. Do it and you will be happy about it. And even if you do it already, you make progress. Yes. If you do nothing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wh where you want to train to. Yeah. So have a goal and also not just follow the trainer. Think always and also not train physical your body. Train also mental, also the mental coach and Sean knows because he's a mental coach and can explain you how important mental coaching is. So Sean, tell a little bit about it. Why this is so important? Well, uh, about you and I actually um, now even think that mental coaching is uh, a separation of everything. We believe in a holistic approach. Right. So, but it's good to separate it for now in the discussion. If you ask everyone, everyone will give me the same answer. How important is, you know, how much in life do you define mentally? And everyone would say that's probably above 80%. Everything that I do is a mental thing. But if you look at, uh, at athletes and dancers, you know, if you see how much time they practice, it's almost always physical, right? There is a little bit of mentality in there. But, you know, I always compare it like this, Tom, and I know it's not a good drink, but the energy drinks like Red Bull, <clears throat> you know, that can give you a boost. That's like motivation. I can give you a motivational talk like I'm doing right now. But mental coaching and mental training is something like nutrition. You do it all the time. You, you have to eat every day healthy, most of the days. doesn't mean that once in a while... Tom and I don't go out and eat some nice pastry because we both like that. <laughs> um, so that, of course that that's, but most of the time we are busy with that. It's not once in a while, the, the espresso coffee or the Red Bull, which give you motivation, which is part of it. That's great. But it, it's a, it's, it's a habit that you bring into you every day. And as much as you can practice a turn or a jump or a flexibility, you can actually practice your mental, mentality as well every day and if you do it in a in a kind of a nice way is when you integrate the two you know the training yes, yes. when uh, remember yeah. when we talked about the planking yeah. i had a mental preparation to say okay yesterday was 50 seconds i just do five seconds more 
And by yes. second, number 40, my mind already wants to give up a little bit, right? Like my body's like, okay, but it's only 15. Let's count down, which is a yes. mental preparation. Yes. Is that not also a manifestation, Sean, that you want of course. to yeah, do of that? Course. Of course. Yeah. You know, of course. I, I, Strangely enough, I mean, this is completely off topic, but I'm telling you it anyhow because it's coming into my mind, is the the more you visualize your goal, your destination, your body also starts to de develop towards that goal, even without the physical training. And that's... Uh, mm -hmm. That is an, a, a part of what we call neuroplasticity. It's um, at, uh, you know, in early researches, that was back in the 50s, we thought that it, your neuroplasticity doesn't develop anymore after the age of seven. <clears throat> we know now you can change your brain at any moment in time. Dr. Amen, there's a really strange name, <laughs> but Dr. Amen, he did a lot of research that at any moment in time, you can still, uh, you know, uh, change uh, the way your bra yeah. brain function, but it also physically changes. And when that physically changes, it has a change on your muscle structure just by yeah. really being busy constantly with your destination. Body mind, we have a podcast about that, listeners. Yeah. So yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> that's one we of do. them. Uh, yeah. Sean, actually, yeah. to stay more healthy, uh, I want not to say uh, the power drink uh, is. Uh, it's not a healthy for him, but <laughs> yeah. So maybe the water of life. Yeah. So if you take the water, that's the uh, that brings you also your power for your life. Yeah. Uh, because you need water actually, otherwise you will not yeah, survive. Of course. So yeah, you need and sleep. What, you need all that things. Yeah. Yes. Actually, also we had it in an earlier podcast. Your mm -hmm. awareness is only uh, day in your daily life, 95% of your daily life that you really n be not aware actually that's, that's of your right. daily life. Yeah. So actually mm. they say uh, in the research, you only 5%, but some researchers said only 1%. And if you would train your flexibility, your um, power training, your core training it's also power training actually um your isolations if you would train this more with awareness i believe that you not have to do uh, the exercise for two hours or one hour you could do it in 20 minutes be more smart if you train be if you train knowledgeable be aware of your body beautiful no. word word we have for it at proprioception be aware of your lines in your body of your connection if you train your power training your flexible training your isolations and you will grow in a shorter time you can make shortcuts for your training if yeah. you be more aware and as sean said it if you put one percent higher you improve already 20 percent of your awareness during the day and i'm aware of my proprioception even in my daily life so when i know i have to close my feet in my practice and dancing during my life i try to feel sometimes how it feels to close so i practice already closing nobody sees that i'm actually already busy with my dancing later on the practice floor but our, I'm already practicing my body awareness. And when you can improve that awareness, yes, and you have your mental coach also, and you practice this, everything, you can reach in a shorter uh, duration, you can reach yeah. more, um, more progress. More. I like that. I like that. I was talking to one of my students, uh, Tom, uh, early this week, and I gave them actually the question, how can you exponentially increase your practice and preparation time and they said well you know we can go maybe one evening more to the dance studio i said okay but that's not exponential i mean that's great if you can do it i immediately have to question why didn't you do that before <laughs> right <laughs> uh, but that's another thing right that's a mentality thing right but uh, and they said well we don't understand what you mean and you know 
exponentially. I mean, what do you mean? I said, I, I literally said, you know, 10x more. And, and I said, with everything you do, you know, you can become more aware of how you do it, proprioception, right? And he said, but what has that to do with dance? Well, my question to you, Tom, that has everything to do with dance, right? If you are more aware how I grab this cup of coffee, it used to be yes. tea, by the way, the awareness of how your body moves increases so much, the exponentially. Yes, Yes, yeah. the difference oh. with it, you know where the cup is in space, yeah. and how and uh, what how long it takes to take it. But you will not think about it because you are not aware of it. Yeah. If you now be aware of it, yes, then you know exactly what bend, stretch, and rotate, and you can also manipulate. Uh, actually define the time for yourself how long define. you take it because you are aware of it and this you can practice during your daily life and when you go to that floor actually you not have a cup of coffee there or tea but you define the point where you go in space and how much time you want to do it if you bend to stretch or rotate it yeah. so that's all about awareness and love it. if you yeah. be aware of it, you need a shorter time. And I call it, by my uh, students, I call it the four focus points. Mm -hmm. One of them is seeing, listening, feeling, because we have two square meter of um, uh, skin where we can feel, and thinking. So... If I have this four focus point and they are all maximum to what you want to learn, it goes much more faster. So if I'm busy during my lessons with this, also as a teacher, I'm busy with feeling. So when I touch my skin and uh, I just um, feel, then I, it goes less for my eyes and for my ears and for my thinking. So be full there for your teacher and yeah. also vice versa the, not that the teacher is a little bit a uh, little bit like this uh, off and that motivates also not so be also as teacher full there nice. and what i want also to say sean mm -hmm. try um to be more critical also as teacher not critical like um negative this but Yes, yeah, but, positive, but, but give them context, but also vice versa, ask them feedback, your students, and try to make your training interesting. Not You can do always the same, but if you do the same, explain them why you do the same, or give them context then, and give them a reason and a goal why you do the same. And if you want make more change of training and um how i would say make it more interesting for them and you uh change the training often but then it gets also more interesting for them so don't stuck to the um always to the same and give them context why you do something and i actually i had another one very important for your training issue simulation uh, sean the um can you tell something about that one ah, the question actually yeah. why that is so important for your training to simulate <clears throat> the training yeah i think i think i think simulation let me try it slightly different than in the dutch podcast simulation is almost like tasting your end results already before you have to give it to your guests right so if you're a cook you don't want to make a, 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 a dish and then you suddenly give it to your guest and hope that it turns out. You have made that dish many times already and you taste it. I think, okay, by the time that I make, you know, my professional cook, by the time that I make it for my guest, now I have done it a few more times in a simulation version where you only test it yourself or with a small group of people, you know, did you say, okay. I said, you know, Tom would say to me here, did you try this dish? And then Tom would say, I would, if, it, if, if it's the real thing, I would do a little bit more salt in it. 
Okay, so my simulation is trying to make the circumstances so that I can already feel how it would be to do the real thing. Now, you do it for two reasons. Uh, I think mentally that helps you a lot because it becomes a little bit more normal to do, uh, to do your audition or your competition. But secondly, which is probably the most important for us, is you can learn a lot from how you can improve what your end result would like, what you would like your end result to be. So there's two sides. You, you have a good mental preparation, the nervous get out of it, you know more. Um, and secondly, you can reflect on your simulation if you make your simulation as close as possible to the real situation, of course. If it's very far off, so let's say you know that you dance on a stage where there's a lot of bright lights. Well, yes. practice then very often with a lot of bright lights, right? You can, you can put the clothes that matches the lights. You can maybe make slightly different arrangements in the company because you have different shadows because of the bright lights, right? So you can prepare that, you know more. If you know that it is a very small floor, make sure then that you have maybe tapes on your floor that you know in what area you should stay, you know? Yeah. Yes. Tom. Yeah, but mostly you also, um, uh, the external factors has influence on that one. Yes. And yeah. if, if you are prepared and try to gain so much as knowledge before, you are prepared. Yeah. It's like that journey, eh, Sean. And then you can departure, then you can make your journey training with all the points you know already before, you collect them, and then you can ar arrive departure. So then is your say your audition for the school or for the company or the competition for the judges or the TV um, presentation uh, where you want to bring your act. But still, you are always depend what the external fa factor thinks about it or feels about it, but still you are prepared. If you are not prepared, then uh, you yeah. are have surprises there and then you will say afterwards why i wasn't prepared for that one and now you can be be prepared because you have to take action and most exactly. people they not take action that's uh sorry that i say that but this is about experience yeah no i i think it's it's spot on it's it's literally making the distinction between do you know what you can influence and what you can't and what you can't influence um don't try it so let me but you can still be prepared for it so you can't influence the weather but you know you can bring an umbrella with you <laughs> does that make sense so you, you cannot yeah. stop the rain from falling but you can definitely make sure that you don't get wet that you don't bring an umbrella that's your preparation right that so that that's how simple it, and the more you know about it and think about it okay i might not be able to change it but i can still do something to prepare myself Another example is like, you know, some competitions, you know, you stay play the music for two minutes. You know, be sure that you can actually, you know, keep up with two minutes. Don't die already after one minute, right? Um, but here is what I wanted to say in the Netherlands, in Dutch too, by the way. So I, I, met a, 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 I met a trainer once and he said to me, you know, I know a competition can be two minutes. So I let my students practice for four minutes. What do you think about it, Sean? I said, well, I, I hate to say things about right and wrong, but in my opinion, that is, I would look at that differently. And he said, what do you mean? Well, if you train a 100 meter sprinter, you don't let them sprint for 200 meters all the time because they divide their, in, divide their energy in a different way. You let them most of the time simulate the 100 meters. They want to give everything in 100 meters, not on 200 meters. It's a different competition. So, and, and it changed his mind. Like, oh my gosh, that makes actually sense. <laughs> because, you know, if they practice for four minutes, yes. they can do but four I, minutes, but they I, use their energy differently. So I simulation understand needs to be 
at times yes. as close exactly. as possible yes. to the real situation. Correct. Whatever that but situation is. What I think I cannot interpret it for him. He thought mm. maybe I want to overcompensate yes. that you yes. have enough there. Logic. I understand. I, yeah. yeah, that's logical. Um, yeah, maybe yes, maybe not. But if you simulate, simulate it so close as possible. As possible. Well, yeah. what you said, yes. And make also many videos because when you nice. see it, because nice. all always the eyes yeah. has the most information, yeah. not the eyes, but the brain, because the eyes are your tools and the brain is busy with all these pictures. And... Um, 80, 90 percent people are picture thinkers. Visual so, thinkers, yeah. Visual yeah. thinkers, yes. And if you then have video um, videos from it from different angles, then your training you can also improve through the analyze of the video because you can look slowly, you can look at um, several times. If you do it one time. We had it in other podcast also. You perceive it only once and uh, then it's gone. So, and uh, the short knowledge, what I want to say, or awareness is really, really short. When I put uh, some, um, how I would say, some small article there and I would read it for you and you must say it, what I wrote for you, then um, probably you will be not so close to it because the most of the words you will forget. And uh, this is why the video is so important. Yes, Sean. Yeah, I like, I like it. visualization. I think it's a whole topic by itself. The power of visualization is, yes. uh, is a whole topic in itself. But, you know, with video and the tools, you know, any tools that you can use to help you with your practice, right uh, you can look at smaller details of what you d been, have been doing together with your coach and your colleagues which comes down to what we said a little bit in the beginning the more distinction you can see in what you do the more closer you get to mastery and mastery is of course a subjective thing but it's not it's just another word for progressing in what you do right and there is a i think it's a german saying with distinction comes mastery which means like the smaller the first time when i started to dance i did not know left from right and right from left we're just doing things and then bit by bit we do it in 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 the book of gem you know the gem method dance from a different perspective though there's many things that you can see in there but one of the things is that ton broke almost everything down you have 10 body parts there are only three things you can move you can move them in a singular way or you can move them in a combination way which we call compost um you know and and everything that you do the dynamics yeah. that you can do uh you know your emotions and the more you can manage all these different things and put them together in the way you want not in the way how yeah. i want but the way you want yeah. yes. that for me uh is a form of mastery you know, yeah, mastering or magic. You or, bring the magic. You can, then. You can almost call, call it magic. Right? So, yeah, we um, go from micro to macro. To macro. And that's uh, so in, in our last conference, uh, Tom, we stumbled on a nice concept. Uh, I thought it was a nice concept, not because I said it, but just we, we work mm -hmm. when we worked with our students, is most people start with, uh, with being unconscious composed they just move everything they do right they scratch their hand but they don't do you know a singular movement <laughs> when they scratch their hand which is much more clear because we scratch their hand we we are very unaware how all these things and in a normal activity that is perfectly fine but if you have if you start to work on your proprioception your awareness of the self, you think, oh, can I actually scratch with only one singular movement? I'm only bending one, you know, body part, right? Or do I it composed, which is now a choice, which is great too. But most yes. of the time when we move, we flippity flap our arms, not even knowing that we do. Becoming aware works better if you come from micro, singular, <laughs> yes. to macro, in a yes. awareness state of mind 
Yes, I, actually, you go from macro to micro, and from and micro, macro to and macro. Then back, back it's, it's, a, it's, so it's, it's always um, you go from unconscious, like yeah, yes. unconscious composed to conscious singular back to conscious composed. That would be the nice yes. way to say it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah? It's absolutely. That would be. That so Sean, I have to teach now. So <laughs> and I have to end the <laughs> podcast. But we are so enthusiastic on this topic, Tom. Yes. It no, an, one an hour, hour was, nothing, eh? was again nothing, and there are many things we need to discuss. So forgive us if we didn't address all the things and all the questions that you have. But you can write to us and 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 let us know if you want to know more about these things or about other things, yeah, and we'll yeah. gladly address it. With this, I already say to you, of course, Tom. You know, happy uh, teaching your students, and I'm looking yes. forward to our next episode of Dance Jams. Yes, next time, next week. Thank you, listeners, for listening. And yeah. Sean will tell you where you can find us. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye. This was uh, the art of practice and preparation in dance with, of course, my good friend Tom and myself. We call ourselves the Dance Jams. And you can find us at Dance Jams uh, on Spotify. You can find us at YouTube or at Ton Greten um, Podcast. And you can find us, of course, on our own website, jam.dance slash podcast. And with that, we say bye-bye. And bye -bye. we hope to see and hear you mm -hmm. next time. All right. I think.